Part 3. Variables. A variable is a storage location and an associated symbolic name, an identifier, which contains some known or unknown quantity or information. For our purposes, variables are used to store information collected during an A to J interview to import into Hot Docs. For this reason, you need to make sure that the names of variables that you use are exactly the same in both programs. These names are case sensitive, which means that capitalization must be consistent. We will work with six different types of variables in this course. The first is a text variable. A text variable holds a text value, such as a name, address, case number, or zip code. You should use a text variable for most of the values collected from the user. Number variables hold a number value. You can use these variables for expenditures, income level, number of children, etc. You only want to use a number variable when you need to use it in a calculation. Otherwise, you should use a text variable instead. So for example, phone number should be text, a zip code should be text, case number should be text. If you don't need to do math with it, it should be text. The date variable holds a date value with month, day, and year separated by forward slashes. You should use this when collecting information such as birthday, residency date, or any date. A true-false variable holds a value that is either true or false depending on the user's response. You would use these variables when determining whether a user is married or unmarried, felon, non-felon, or any yes-no situation. A multiple choice variable holds multiple values and can be either select one option or select all that apply. Anytime you want to choose between multiple options, you should use a multiple choice variable. A computation variable contains a script that lets you do programming constructs within that variable. You can use this to combine first, middle, and last name variables into a full name, or line one and line two address variables into a full address. You can also use this to make portions of your form conditional. Naming conventions. For consistency, we ask that you adhere to the variable naming conventions outlined below when coming up with your variable names. Capitalize the first letter of the first word of your variable name. Each additional word should be lowercase. Make sure to add the two-letter type identifier onto the end of your variable. This is TE for text, NU for number, EA for date, TF for true-false, MC for multiple choice, and CO for computation. You should also try to name your variables with alphabetical organization in mind. For example, you should name your variables petitioner name first TE, petitioner name middle TE, and petitioner name last TE, rather than petitioner first name TE, petitioner middle name TE, or petitioner last name TE, because they will all appear in the same order in the component manager when you use name first instead of first name. These naming conventions are industry standard and you should adhere to them both in and out of class. Some notes on variables. An unanswered variable holds a null value, which will break computation variables and will show up as red text on an RTF template. Unanswered variables are variables that have not been assigned a value. If you try to use an unanswered variable as part of a computation or conditional statement, it will make the output nothing. If you have any unanswered variables, that are called by an RTF template. It will output a null value denoted by red text. As mentioned earlier, you should only use a number variable instead of a text variable when you need to perform a calculation using this value. Some instances where you might want to do this would be when you're adding up a user's monthly expenditures for a fee waiver, or collecting the number of children, petitioners, or whatever as a limiter in a repeat loop. Do not use number variables to hold a phone number, zip code, street number, or any number that will not be used in a calculation. A text variable will work just fine for these types of data. True-false variables should be used in place of multiple choice variables when a question involves a yes-no response. 
or in some instances when your form involves checkboxes. Anytime the user has a choice between two options, you should use a true-false variable instead of multiple choice. Speaking of multiple choice variables, there are two options that you can use when creating these variables. You can do either select one or select all that apply. When you want the user to be able to select more than one option, you should create these variables as select all that apply multiple choice variables. And one note on computation variables, they can be used to save time when you are working with conditional statements and multiple variables to be inserted into a single field on your form. Under the computation variables script, you can use conditionals to account for different circumstances that may affect what you want to include in the response field. For example, you may want to use a computation variable to combine first, middle, and last name variables into a full name variable. Since not all users will have a middle name, you can write a script to check and see if the middle name variable is answered, and if so, to include it as part of the full name. This will be covered more in the Advanced Hot Docs tutorial. Part 4. The Developer Window. The Developer Window contains your library file that has file paths for all the templates used in your project. You can create a new library file, open an existing library file, test assemble your project, edit the selected template, add or remove templates, open the component manager, and open the template manager from this window. For the first exercise in this tutorial, we will create a new library file. Click the New Library button and give your library a name. I'm going to call mine Basic Hot Docs Training. Click in the title field to insert the name that you just typed. You don't need a description. Next, let's add a template to this library file. Click the Add Item button, choose Form Template, and browse to where you've saved the exercise files for this tutorial. Select Petition for Name Change and click OK. That template is now part of your library. As noted earlier, the library file holds loca the location for each template on your computer. If you use a library file on a different computer, you need to right-click on each template, go to Properties, and re-specify the file path. Although you can use both HPT and RTF files within the same library, for our purposes, you should stick to one or the other. Part 5. The Component Manager. With Petition for Name Change highlighted, Click on the Component Manager button. Within the Component Manager, you can save your component file, create a new component, edit a component, delete components, rename components, duplicate a variable, open another component file, and find a component within that component file. For the second exercise in this tutorial, we're going to create a new text variable. Within the Component Manager, click the New Component button. With text variable selected, hit OK. Type case number TE in the variable name field. And click OK. Note that you do not have to create variables in the component manager. You can do so by working in a template by clicking the variable field button. Part 6. The Hot Docs PDF Automator. From the developer window, with Petition for Name Change highlighted, click Edit. This will open the template in the Hot Docs PDF Automator. Within the PDF Automator, you can create a new template, open an existing template, and save your template. The Field Properties button allows you to set up different options for your variable fields. The Variable Field button creates a new variable. The Test Assemble button test assembles your document. The tools are what you will use to work within your form you should have the black arrow selected to create new fields. Show or highlight fields will hide your variable fields so that you can align your fields to match up with the form. The third exercise in this tutorial involves creating a new variable field. With the select tool highlighted, click and drag a new variable field where the case number should go on the form. Double click on the field or click the variable field button. Select Case Number TE from the drop-down menu and click OK. Here we should note that you should make sure that your variable fields line up by selecting multiple fields by control-clicking and then right-clicking and selecting Align Fields. 
if you had another field below this one, say it's over here, you should control click on the both of them, click align fields, and make sure that they match up. We'll get into this more during the advanced training when we do checkboxes. It's just important to make sure that your fields are aligned well so that everything looks clean on the printed form. Part 7, the Hotdocs toolbar from Microsoft Word. Browse to where you save Petition for Name Change without tables. Double click on it to open it in Microsoft Word. You should have a Hotdocs toolbar with all the buttons you see here. The Test Assemble button is located here, next to the Save and Save and Close buttons. It's important to remember to use these buttons to save your template. If you use the Save button on Microsoft Word, none of your variables will be saved. The Variable Field button is located here. You can create a new If-Else statement using the If Field button. And you can use the Insert field to insert another component. You can use the Insert field to insert another template into a master template. The Edit Component button can be used to modify the options under a variable. With an RTF form, you will often need to format fields into tables to prevent overflow from messing up the look of your form. You can turn off the borders on a table by clicking the table, then clicking the Design tab, and selecting No Borders. If you don't see the grid lines that I have here, click Layout, and make sure View Grid Lines is selected. Within the Layout tab, you can also split cells, edit the table properties, change the text position, and modify the cell margins. You will also need to fix the size of your table. First, select the table, then right-click and select Auto Fit. Select Fixed Column Width. Then go to Table Properties. Select the Row tab and click Specify Height. Then choose Exactly from the drop-down menu. You will need to do this for each row in the table. This ensures that the table stays consistent throughout the form. For the next exercise, we will create a table to control the position of variables in your form. Put your cursor just after the line that says My Date of Birth Is and hit Enter to give yourself some room to work with. Click the Insert tab, click Table, and draw a 6x1 table. Resize the table to match the line above. One cell should be for the number one, one cell for the next bit of text, one for the first blank line, one for the comma, and one for the next blank line, and then finally one for the period at the end. Next, highlight the entire table, click the Layout tab, then click Cell Margins. Change all the cell margins to zero. Then click the Design tab. Under Borders, click No Borders. Put your cursor in the cell that will represent the first blank line. Hit Borders and select Bottom Border. Do the same for the second blank line. Next, type the number 1 in the first cell. Paste the text into the second and the comma in the period as well. Resize your table to try and make it look exactly as the line does above. Delete the space around the table and delete the line above. Unfortunately, you will need to do this for all the fixed response fields in your form. There is a completely tabled version of this form in the exercise files for your reference. You can use it as a template to table your own forms. Now that you've experienced the excruciating pain of creating tables in RTF forms, 
it's an appropriate time to discuss the differences between HPT and RTF forms and choosing which one will work correctly for your project. HPT templates are static because they're based on a PDF file. This means the form is like an image file. You don't have to worry about long responses messing up the form. And users cannot edit the form once it gets printed, and thus making it into something that a court won't accept. An RTF form is the opposite. It takes a while to put everything into tables, but the user, or a legal aid worker assisting them, can edit the document in Microsoft Word to fill in missing information, or add something that's obscure, or you couldn't have accounted for in your interview. For this reason, RTF templates are often used for interviews designed to be completed by legal aid advocates assisting a pro se litigant. Since in most circumstances you do not want a pro se litigant messing with the printed form, you should favor an HPT template unless the attorney supervising your project would prefer an RTF and is aware of the drawbacks and the extra time it will take you to automate the form. In Illinois, all of our forms that are directed at pro se litigants are done in PDF format using HPT template files. Those that are directed at legal aid advocates assisting pro se litigants are done in RTF format. Part 9. Topics covered in advanced training. The following topics will be covered in the Hot Docs advanced training guide. Conditional statements, repeat loops, check boxes, multiple choice variables in Hot Docs, computation variables, insert statements, and using a master template with, with a shared component file.